Sea Change benefits transfer students, and NMU plans its next steps for the Jacob Betty renovation. Later, Caleb Rydell will have an up-to-date weather forecast, and Todd Rose will be back with sports. Hi, I'm Mason Walls. I'm Todd Rose, and welcome to the first edition of Public Eye News for winter semester 2018. Northern Michigan University has increased the number of credit hours students can transfer from regionally accredited community colleges from 64 to 90. The recently approved policy changes will go into effect this fall. According to NMU Registrar Kim Rotundo, quote, as long as they complete a minimum of 30 credits from NMU and meet the degree requirements, they will be able to graduate, end quote. On a related note, the university no longer requires that a, at least 20 of a student's final 30 credits be completed at NMU. And in other NMU news, the school is looking at a $28.6 million renovation for the Jacob Betty Center. The renovation plans to assist career technical education and better prepare students to meet industry demands. This renovation is in line with Governor Rick Snyder's Supplemental Appropriations Bill, which sets out to modernize classrooms and update labor excuse me, laboratories for skilled trades. The university is hoping for a construction authorization within one year. The Dickinson County Sheriff's Office responded to a plane crash that occurred on Saturday, January 19th, just before 2 p.m. The dispatch received a call which said a Piper Super Cub had crashed on Fume Lake in Brighton Township. The 62-year-old pilot was transported by ambulance to the Dickinson County Healthcare System where he was treated and released for minor injuries. The accident has been reported to the Federal Aviation Administration for further investigation and the plane remains under the lake, on the lake. And the Carefree Dental Clinic of Dickinson and Florence Counties received a grant over $13,000 Monday afternoon. The Blue Cross Blue Shield awarded the grant, which will be used to help give free dental clinic assist people who are either uninsured or underinsured. They serve more than 200 patients a year and run only on volunteer efforts of the dentists and assistants. Clinic Director Dr. Ted Frenetti said, quote, it will be quite substantial for us and last us a good amount of time, end quote. Governor Gretchen Whitmer reached out to the Department of Labor requesting that the state of Michigan provide unemployment insurance eligibility for federal employees who are working without pay. Some government employees are struggling to support themselves after a month without pay and non-essential federal workers are being furloughed. Gretchen Whitmer has already promised help for furloughed workers. However, federal regulations are preventing her from giving aid to employees who are working without pay during this government shutdown. And according to the Michigan Department of Treasury, business taxpayers should be extra alert for cyber criminals attempting to steal W-2 forms and other sensitive information through a phishing scam. Cyber criminals impersonate persons of authority within a company and send an email to payroll personnel asking for copies of all employee W-2 forms within a typical scenario. Business taxpayers who receive this type of email are asked to report the encounter to phishing at irs.gov. That's phishing, P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G at irs.gov. And stay tuned because after this quick break, we'll be back with more on national and international news. Fire is the last wild element of the West. There was an attitude that wildfire was this beast that we can actually hunt down and eradicate. The fire that changed America's landscape forever. The Forest Service is only five years old. They have never fought a big fire. They see this wall of flames creeping toward them. They think this is the end. The Big Burn on American Experience. Tonight at 9 after Finding Your Roots on Public TV 13. Welcome back. More than 1,000 firefighters from the U.S. and Canada are expected to march with teachers in Los Angeles. Negotiations continue in the nation's second largest school district as the strike enters into the sixth day. Tens of thousands of educators walked onto the picket lines January 14th and continue to be at odds over salaries, class size, and support staff. The school has remained open for its nearly 600,000 students, although only with a skeleton staff. And the Kentucky school at the center of a controversial video is closed today out of safety concerns. Some students from Covington Catholic High School had an encounter this weekend with a Native American man in Washington, D.C., but there's a backstory to the video that went viral. 
Nicole Killian has the latest, including President Trump's reaction. A small group of Native American protesters quietly gathered in Covington, Kentucky, and talked to reporters. They're here because of this encounter between teenagers from Covington Catholic High School wearing Make America Great hats and Native American elder Nathan Phillips. I felt like it was uh, a little inappropriate, a little disrespectful for the kid to just be like smug with a little smirk on his face. Hey, hey, hey. This is some of the first video of the event, an angle that makes it appear Phillips was being treated disrespectfully. But more videos followed. This one shows a group known as the Black Hebrew Israelites taunting the students. The students here. shouted over them with their school cheers. President Trump weighed in on the controversy Tuesday, which happened here on these steps at the Lincoln Memorial, tweeting that the students had been treated unfairly and smeared by the media. Twitter has suspended the account that posted the initial video and retweeted it hundreds of times, calling the students a MAGA loser who was gleefully bothering a Native American. CBS News has learned the account at 2020 fight had 40,000 followers and claimed to have belonged to a California school teacher, but used the photo of a Brazilian blogger. The school has since offered an apology for how their students behaved, but chaperones with them say they did nothing wrong. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Washington. The court is taking up its first gun rights case in nine years, challenging New York City's prohibition on carrying a concealed weapon outside city limits. This case was filed by three New York residents and the National Rifle Association, the NRA, in New York. The case will show a revived desire for gun rights. However, the case will not be discussed until October. And the president is now pointing to new developments on Mexico's southern border to win support for his wall. He tweeted last night, quote, Two large caravans from Honduras broke into Mexico and are headed our way. We need a powerful wall, end quote. Adriana Diaz reports from Tapachula, Mexico. There's no sign of a slowdown at what? Mexico's southern border. The hundreds here are among the first to test Mexico's new migration policy that starts with these bracelets, which get embedded with their personal information. People are calling this one of the most important pieces of paper they've ever gotten because this is what registers them with the Mexican government. This is their ticket to eventually get a humanitarian visa. We were the only news outlet allowed inside the government's week-old processing center, where authorities photograph, interview, fingerprint, and take iris recognition scans of applicants. Immigration official Ana Laura Martinez. Que lo hace más seguro para ellos. So she's saying if people are going to come regardless, even illegally, better to give them a way, a path to come um, in a way that's regularized, that's legal. I believe that uh, the, the Mexico is doing the right thing as human. Irineo Mujica's organization, Pueblo Sin Fronteras, has been assisting migrant caravans since 2008. While many are U.S. bound, others, like 19-year-old Elmer Lopez, who never finished high school in Honduras, plans to use his humanitarian visa to stay in Mexico. He says you have to know how to take advantage of an opportunity like this. People don't get these kinds of opportunities typically. So many people want this new legal status that the Mexican government says more than 6,500 people have applied just in the last week. And most of the people on this line actually entered Mexico illegally late last year. They've been boarding buses this morning to go back to the border, basically go backwards to start the legal process. The question is, once they get visas, they can stay in Mexico for a year, whether they will stay here or try to get to the U.S. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Tapachula, Mexico. And after the break, we'll have your weather and sports. Stay with us. That's my <laughs> Hawaii's Kilauea volcano explodes, get away from there? turning paradise into a raging inferno. Like a fire-breathing dragon. Toxic gas and rivers of lava. Oh my God. Can scientists unlock its mysteries before the next catastrophic eruption? Insane. Kilauea, Hawaii on fire on Nova. Wednesday at 9 after Nature on Public TV 13.
Welcome back. I'm Kayla Rado, going to be taking you through your weather for today. As you can see behind me on the NMU campus, we still have a lot of snow out there, and that doesn't look like it's going to be going anywhere as we are really getting into winter now, and uh, things are really chilling out. Looking at our current conditions out there. We're looking at cloudy with a temperature of 23 degrees, winds out of the southwest at seven miles per hour, and a barometric pressure of 30.05 inches and falling. Taking a look tonight, we're gonna see partly cloudy out there with a low of 16 degrees and winds out of the west northwest at nine miles per hour. And then tomorrow, we're looking at some snow coming in again and some a high A of 25 and winds out of the north northwest at 12 miles per hour. Taking a look across the UP, we're going to see a whole lot of snow going out there. We're going to start over in Sault Ste. Marie with 19 degrees, 24 in Manistique, Escanaba with 24 and down in Menominee, 23. Taking a look at the western half of the UP, Iron Mountain with 19, 16 in Ironwood. Up in the Keweenaw in Houghton with that 21 degrees and that snow. And then we're looking back here at Marquette with that 23 degrees and cloudy. Let's take a look at your week ahead. On Thursday, we're looking at a high of 19 with a low of negative 3 and some snow out there. Friday, we're looking at a high of 1 and a low of negative 7. We're going to get real chilly on Friday. And then Saturday, we're looking at a high of 6 with a low of negative 2 and some clouds. Well, it's getting a little bit too cold to go out to the Lake Superior, but I hear NMU is still getting in the water, Todd. Oh, absolutely. Getting in the water and doing well in it and out of it. It's been a successful season for the NMU swim and dive teams thus far this year, and their success doesn't stop in the pool. The men's and women's Wildcats swim and dive teams have been selected to the College Swimming and Diving Coaches Association of America Scholar All-America team list. The Cats are part of 713 teams, which is a record number, from 460 institutions to make the 2018 fall semester Scholar All-America team. The women who finished dual meet season 8 and 1 posted an average GPA of 3.48, while the undefeated, excuse me, undefeated in dual meet season men posted an average 3.25. The Wildcats hope to continue this season's success at the GLIAC Championships, which kick off tomorrow. And from the pool now to the basketball courts, Wildcats are seeing success just about everywhere. Saturday afternoon, the men's and women's Wildcats swept Grand Valley State University. First to take the court were the women, who handed Grand Valley their first loss in, their, in the Glee Act this year and second overall in a 56-43 victory over the number 9 ranked team. The men then took to the court and followed the women's victory with one of their own beating Grand Valley 70-61. Following these stellar performances, both Lexi Smith and Nava Eccles were, Glee, were named GLIAC North Players of the Week. The Cats are back in action Saturday as they host Michigan Tech at the Barry Event Center, which should be a very good game indeed. And finally, the stage is set for the Super Bowl 53, and one could say it's a rematch 17 years in the making. Tom Brady and the New England Patriots will take on the Los Angeles Rams in this year's NFL Championship game. It was, the, it was Super Bowl 36 in 2002 when these two teams last met in the championship game, which was also Tom Brady's first appearance in a Super Bowl. The Patriots won, this, won that game by three points on an Adam Vinatieri field goal as time expired. Also notable is that both the Patriots and Rams earned their shot for Super Bowl glory by winning their respective conference championships in overtime. Patriots 37-31 over the Kansas City Chiefs, and Rams 26-23 over the New Orleans Saints. Super Bowl 53 will kick off in just over a week and a half on February 3rd with coverage provided by CBS and always stellar com color commentary from Tony Romo. Well, that is all the time we have for you on this first show of 2019. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again tomorrow. I, uh, I messed that up. Anyway. The preceding program was produced in studios located in the Edgar L. Hardin Learning Resources Center by WNMU-TV. Northern Michigan University Public Television.